Hello, it's John here for another 852 tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be working towards creating a sort of fireball effect. So there's going to be a few components of this. We're going to, first of all, start looking at emissive colors and how we can create those on top of a material. And then we're going to use a timeline to control those emissive colors. And then what we'll do in probably part two is we will take that material, apply a sort of particle effect to it to really sell the whole process, and then perhaps put like a sort of matinee timeline movement system on it as well to really make it a bit more dynamic. So let's just jump straight in and get going, shall we? I have already imported my material. This is going to be some of my base material, and let's right click and create a new material so this material I'll, I think it's already called fireball no it is not just got to read the it's fire ball underscore mat material matter and let's open our material editor and here we are inside our material editor let's bring in our material here and see what this looks like just when we drag it in we're just going to drag this as our base color and our opacity oops what we'll need to actually first before i'm getting a bit carried away bit ahead of myself let's change from opaque to masked so there we go now that we've got that set up and ready to rock i'm just going to right click and add two types of parameters so if we type in parameter we want a vector parameter and in this we can this is what our glow is going to be so let's choose our glow I'm gonna go loosely around there that was quite fiery and let's hold that why didn't you change you did maybe it's just not dated yet and we want a scale parameter and this is going to be our power so in here let's just rename this power or power or strength and let's set our default value to 2 now what we're going to need to do is we are going to drag off this and type in multiply and all this is going to do is combine these together so we're going to be able to control the strength of our glow the power of our glow with this multiplier and we are then going to drag this into our emissive color and think of emissive color like a glow effect like a glow effect and you know the more strength we've got to that the more power it is the brighter it will glow and we're not quite done yet I just want to add sort of one more thing to this just to really help sell the effect and that is a rotation a rotator and in here I'm just going to leave those as default for now maybe speed it up to 0 0.6 and drag this into my texture and that right there is pretty much going to be my material set up so what I want to do is we want to find our material in our content browser which is just down here and then we are going to create an instance of that I think of an instance as a sort of unique occurring for that so we could create lots of different instances and create different effects and the material is looking pretty nice actually so I'm just going to pull this out of here right click my material and create a material instance if I click on the right one awesome so let's double click this and check it out so this is going to give us a new type of view and what we want to do in here our primary 
purpose is going to be turning on our scalar parameter. So now let's just try rolling this around. So when it's on like zero glow, if I make it second zero, we've got our initial material effect. And we'd see now if we grab this and we pull it up, the higher we pull it up, the more it's going to create a sort of sun-like glow effect until it washes everything out. And by default, let's just almost set this like 0 0.2. Maybe even 0 0.1. And that's looking pretty cool. Alright, that's pretty much our material setup. And what we're going to want to do is put this on something. So I'm just going to drag my window out of the way. And right click to create a new blueprint. I'm going to create an active blueprint. And name it... Fireball underscore BP and double click that. So inside of our blueprint editing system over here, we're going to want to add a couple of components. We are going to want to add a static mesh. And let's choose our static mesh. And I'm going to go for a sphere. I don't want a shape sphere. So there we go. This is my sphere. And I want to drag on my material instance to this. So material instance. And there we go. That is the sphere with our material on there. But we're not done yet because we're going to want to be able to control this with our blueprints. So what this is going to do is we're going to create a timeline because we want the glow to almost pulsate up and down so let's right click and we are going to want to type um, we're going to want to set a scalar parameter and you know that it's already pulled in our reference for our static mesh over here let's just pull this to the side a little bit more gives it more room to work and what we also want to do is create a timeline so if you type in timeline you'll see a timeline down here and this inside we can now open our timeline so let's go across and double click it to open our timeline and we're going to add a new flow track and in our flow track hold shift and put down a, a couple of points let's loosely make it about two seconds so for this it doesn't so much matter where you go as long as you know you're never below zero so we want to just loosely flicker between there and never go between lower than zero because otherwise we'll see the effect without the glow on it and it won't look too good Cool. Alright, we're almost done in here. Let's click our last point and loop it and use last keyframe. So what we're saying here, use last keyframe is at this point, don't play the whole track, just play up to here and obviously loop. So if we go back to our event graph, let's grab these things, move them up to the side a little bit. And what we're going to say is in this new track, this is where our information is, that's going to set our parameter value and we want this to affect power and I don't believe I used the capital because bad English and at the start of play at the start of play use this timeline to create this effect when updated affect our scalar parameter and with these parameter values settings and hit compile I'm just going to move this out of the way and I'm going to drop in my blueprint. And let's press play and see if it works. Okay, I immediately know where I'm going wrong. We can still we can see the flicker, but it is just not as powerful as I would like it to be. And that is because our values right here. No, I'll set, like, this is 0 0.25. And if we were to go to 
a material instance and set this to 0 0.25 it's not very bright it's not very high so we're going to want to multiply this so let's drag you out of the way and instead of here let's type in multiply and we'll just times a float by a float and let's try 500 see how that looks and new updates and information will go there and you come over here and let's try whoa too bright we've come too far that is I mean it's working it is just too bright so let's turn those that multiply down because I typed in 5,000 how foolish play come out of the way play there we go we have got this lighting up we can't really see the material again I think possibly the numbers are a bit too high so you know it's just gonna be sort of tweaking and playing with this I'm gonna times it by 100 and want to maybe change the glow a bit as well make it a bit redder a bit more red and let's check see how that looks yeah that looks way better so by default be like 0 0.2 just gonna check out my timeline make sure not actually going to have as much difference between the parameter values. Make it a bit more subtle. Compile and come out of the way and let's press play. Looks pretty cool. Again, just going to tweak the numbers. Should have probably ran a test before I did this. Got the numbers right. But hey ho. Try times 300. Compile. You know, let's just put this in. It's already in Simulate. That's pretty nice. That's a pretty nice glow. In fact, I might take it up a little bit more. 400. And just tweak this material so it's a little bit brighter. And that should be good. So, for the sake of test, just to make sure our material looks good as well, what we will, what I'm going to do is activate um, or simulate physics. Even I need to do that in the blueprint in the viewport. Pull you out. Static mesh. Simulate physics. Compile. And let's, for example, give this a bit of a drop as well. And I'm going to drop it onto a cone. And let's press play. So this is loosely what it will look like when we've actually got some motion on there. We can see the other because we've dropped the opacity on there. It looks sort of kind of cool, especially with the glow. Might make the glow a bit brighter. But yeah, there you have it. That's the first part of our tutorial. We have used an emissive color. We have added it to a timeline. And we are ready to then sort of tweak it and play with it a little bit more. Cool. Thanks for watching.